Hey what is up, mortals? It is. Robo Celestial here with a new video for you. Welcome to What If Deku Was a Dragon Slayer. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying. Sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. Enijim is an unmatched commander, who honors the hero's code. I hope to one day be a hero just like him. Seeing this excited energy from Ida made Midoriya smile. The green team could see that Ida looked up to his brother just like he looked up to All Might. Suddenly an alarm started to sound throughout the cafeteria. All of the students started to panic and flee from the giant space. Wendy spoke in a panicked tone. What is going on? I have no idea, but I know a way to find out. Izuku grabbed the sleeve of a fleeing student and slammed him against the wall. Tell me what is going on. What does that alarm mean? That is a stage 3 alert. Okay. Is that bad? All I know is that there has not been a stage 3 alert in my 3 years here. So it must be something bad. Midwarrior released the panicked student from his grip and he ran off. The group was heading to evacuate too. When Wendy spoke up. Guys, let's wait a minute. I get the feeling that something is not right here. She has a point. Let's take a look around the outside windows first. The four friends each took a different corner of the now empty cafeteria. While the room did not give a total view. The windows in the giant space did give an overview of most of the campus. Wendy noticed something odd. Guys look at this. The other three students gathered around the window Wendy was looking out of. Ida replied in shock. Are those reporters? That is what it looks like to me. We need to tell everyone. They are all acting like the place is being attacked by villains. The four classmates ran toward the hallway the other students had evacuated into two. When Midoriya threw the door open he and the others were shocked by the sight that met their eyes. All of the students were in a panic. The hallway was jammed packed with students. Many of their classmates were being pressed against the walls. We need to act fast. If this continues then they are going to hurt each other. What should we do? Ada. I will use my wind powers to lift you above the crowd. You should be able to get their attention then. Tell them that they are in no danger. That is a great plan Wendy. But couldn't you just levitate yourself above the crowd just as easily? The young dragon slayer blushed at Ada's statement. I can't do that Ada. I am wearing a skirt. If you haven't noticed, that would get everyone's attention in the wrong way. Also, I am not that kind of girl. Ada and Midoriya blushed at the thought their male teenage minds conjured up. Ada then shook his head to rid himself of the mental image. The blue-aired blue then replied with an affirmative tone to his diminutive classmate. Okay Wendy, let's do it. Wendy surrounded Ida with a whirlwind. The girl with pigtails then maneuvered her classmate over the crowd. As Ida hovered in the air, Midoriya and Yuraka gave him a thumbs up. Ada then spoke in a loud voice. Everyone, there is no need to panic. There is no emergency. A bunch of reporters got onto the campus somehow. We are students of UA. We need to show everyone what that means. After hearing this speech, all of the students in the crowded hallway calm down and exit the hallway in an orderly fashion. Back in the 1A classroom, Midoriya and Momo stand in front of the classroom. The green-haired youth then speaks to the class. Okay we need to pick the class officers. But before we do that I need to say something. Midoriya takes a deep breath to calm himself. Guys I think that Wendy Marvel should be the class representative. During the emergency, she was calm and collected. She saw that something was wrong and led me, Yuraka, and Ida to find out what was going on. She then came up with a plan to get our panicking classmates under control. If that does not make her a good leader, then I don't know what does. Kirishima was the first to voice his opinion. He has a point guys. Wendy was very manly during that emergency. I am good with her leading our class. What do you say guys? Ada spoke up next, making several robotic gestures as he spoke. Yes. If Wendy had not acted, then who knows what would have happened. I, for one, would be proud to be led by her. The blue-haired girl was touched by admiration for her leadership skills. Wendy had to use all of her might to keep from crying. Even with all the effort she still teared up a little. The girl with blue pigtails finally managed to speak just two words. Thanks guys. Urza Scarlet had been standing off to the side. Watching this touching scene play out. Finally the fiery redhead could take no more of it. I am pleased to see that you think so much of Mrs. Marvel's abilities. The weapon master then glared at Midoriya with a blazing look that would melt iron. But you are all wasting time. I do not care who the representative is. Just pick one already. With that shock, the class all agreed that Wendy would be the representative and Momo would be the vice representative. Although Momo was a little embarrassed that she had to answer to a girl that got no votes. However, the girl with the dark ponytail succeeded to the wish of her class. After all of the students had gone home and the sun was setting, Principal Nezu and several UA staff members were standing outside looking at a section of the UA barrier that had been destroyed. So, this is what caused all of the trouble today. Let us be glad it was just reporters that broke in and not villains. Midnight was crouched down looking at the destroyed section of barrier. 
It looks like this section was turned into a pile of rust. Surely it would be easy to track someone with a quirk like this. According to my sources there has not been anyone that has registered with a power like that. But I am more concerned by what this action means. How so principal? Well, a person with a power like that comes here only to destroy a section of the barrier. It doesn't make any sense. I have a feeling that there's more to this action. But whether it is a single action or a declaration of war is yet to be seen. We must prepare for both possibilities. The principal then stroked his mousy chin in deep thought. I fear that dark days are ahead of us. Midori and his fellow Class 1A students all gathered in their homeroom without fanfare. This calm start to the day was a welcome relief to the students after the hassle of the reporter invasion of the previous day. As the first bell rang, Wendy, the new class representative, told all of her classmates to get to their seats. The blue-haired girl and the other students knew that Mrs. Scarlet would not be happy if she found the class in disarray when she arrived, knowing that the stern woman often solved with force. The students of 1A did not want to press their luck. Even Bakko, who didn't listen to anyone, got to his seat. He probably had no wish to be punched through a wall again. Urza slid the door open and walked into the classroom. The fiery redhead scanned the room and gave a satisfied nod at seeing that her students were prepared for class. The tall woman then took her place at the lectern to begin class. Good morning. Today we have a special class. The way Urza accented the word special made every member of class 1A strutter in fear. In the back of their minds the students all wondered if their rearming teacher would threaten them with expulsion. Today we will be going to an off-campus location. The powerful hero then held up a card that had the words rescue written in a stylized font. Today's class will be about rescue. While combat with villains gets most of the media attention, it is just as important that you understand the methods and manners of a rescue operation. You never know when you will have to render first aid or protect civilians from harm. Today's training will give you a better understanding of these practices. The crimson-haired warrior then pressed a button on the lectern. The shelves holding the students' hero costumes emerged from the left wall of the classroom. I know you are all super amped about costumes, but be aware that you have not gotten used to them yet and they could restrict your movement. Go get changed and meet at the bus stop. After the students got changed, they met at the bus stop just like Urza instructed, loaded up the bus, and they were off to the training site. As the bus rolled along, the students were surprised to see Midoriya, Kaminari, and Wendy bent over in the fetal position. All three looked like they might lose their lunch at any second. Gyro was the first one to speak her mind. Are you three okay? You look really sick. Midoriya managed to note vomit when he responded. I don't know why but I think I am suffering from motion sickness. I have never had it before. Same here. I have never felt like this on a bus before. Glad I am not the only one suffering. Urza overheard the teens and figured she better give them an answer. It is probably because they can channel natural energies through their bodies. Individuals with power sets like that tend to have high body and spatial awareness. Unfortunately, someone with this hyper-awareness can get motion sickness very easily. Urza knew the real reason for the teens' discomfort was because they were dragon slayers. While Kaminari had not used any dragon slayer spells, she knew the bolt-headed teen had been trained by Laxus Dreyer. It would make sense that Kaminari would have been trained in the ways of the dragon slayer. Urza figured that the blonde teen had not shown off that part of his power because Laxus told him not to. Laxus tended to only use his dragon slayer powers when he got serious. Of course. Urza was surprised that these three were getting this sick from a bus ride. She felt bad for her students, but knew that this was a good sign. The more powerful a dragon slayer got, the worse their motion sickness got. Urza was so lost in thought that she only saw that the bus had arrived at the last minute. The wild-eyed woman cleared her throat and spoke with a firm tone. We are here boys and girls. The tall woman then motioned for the student to exit the bus. After exiting the bus in an orderly fashion, the students were met by the Space Hero 13. Suddenly Yuraka exclaimed at the sight of the space-suited hero. Wow. I can't believe 13 is one of our teachers. She is one of my favorite heroes. Midoriya was shocked to hear the pink-cheeked girl get excited. It's weird to hear you get so excited, Yuraka. The short girl got a little embarrassed by Midoriya's comment. I like how she is so effective at saving people. And her quirk is awesome. As the students talked about how cool it was that all of the teachers at UA were pro heroes. Urza pulled 13 to the side and asked a question. Where is All Might? I thought he was supposed to be here. 13 held up three fingers as she spoke. It seems he overused his quirk on the way to work this morning. He is currently resting back at UA. He told me that he would join us after he rested a little. Urza got an irritated look on her face. That man is an idiot. Running around stopping small-time criminals in his condition. I am going to give him a piece of my mind later. 13 then gave the 1A students a short talk about how dangerous their quirks really are. 
She told the students to keep in mind that even quirks that seem harmless could be used to kill if not used properly. After that sobering lecture, 13 led Urza and the students into the dome behind her. The students all went wide-eyed at the sight of the interior of the dome. The whole place was subdivided into areas that looked like scenes from a disaster movie. Thirteen then explained the interior setup to the students. I designed this place to simulate all kinds of disasters. It is the perfect place to train young heroes how to handle rescues in a disaster. And I call this place the Unforeseen Stimulation Joint, or USJ. As surprised as the kids were by the interior, they were more surprised by the name of the facility. All of the students thought it has the same initials as Universal Studios Japan. Suddenly. A dark and ominous shadow appeared in the middle of the USJ, as the shape solidified into the shape of a doorway made of darkness. Just as the doorway took shape a skinny young man dressed in black walked through the portal followed by a large man with a bird back. Several more portals opened and many more strange figures emerged. Kirishima looked at the growing group in the middle of the dome with great confusion. Is this part of the exercise? Urza had been watching the scene and was panicking inside. She finally spoke up when her students started to move toward the ominous crowd. Stay back all of you. This is not an exercise. Those are villains. Sensei. What should we do? Get to the door and exit the building. Thirteen and I will take care of these villains. With a flash of yellow light, two swords appeared in Urza's hands. The armored woman then leaped into the middle of the assembled villains and began laying waste to the group. Urza took out most of the villains with a single slash of her sword. The sight was awe-inspiring for many of the students. Wendy broke her classmates out of their awe-induced paralysis. Guys we need to do like Mrs. Scarlet said. The blue-haired girl then led the members of Class 1A back toward the doors. Before the teens made it to the doors they were intercepted by a man who looked like he was made of shadows and smoke. The sinister figures stared at the youths with glowing yellow eyes. After a few minutes, the Stygian figure spoke with a voice that sounded as evil as his appearance. Hello heroes. We are the League of Villains. We have come here to kill All Might but I see that he is not here. Funny. We were told that he would be here. Midoriya and Bakugo got fiery looks on their faces. Neither boy thought that these villains could kill the number one hero. But just the words were enough to get the boys to rush the shadowy evildoer. Before the boys could land their attacks the villain engulfed the two brazen young heroes in a blanket of shadows, sending the fiery teens to parts unknown. What did you do to my friend, you giant will-o'-wisp? The same thing I am going to do with the rest of you mini heroes. Be gone. The shadow man wrapped all the students throughout the facility. Honey is a free browser add-on available on Google. Opera, Firefox, Safari, if it's a browser it has Honey. Honey automatically saves you money when you check out on sites like Amazon, Papa John's, Coles, wherever you shop it's a good chance that Honey can save you money. All you have to do when you're checking out at these major sites click that little orange button and it will scan the entire internet and find discount codes for you. It takes two clicks to install Honey. Now anytime you check out Honey will scan the entire internet and find coupon codes for you. If there is a coupon code they will find it. And if there's not a coupon code you can rest assured that you are getting the best price possible and there literally is not one available on the internet. If you install Honey right now you can save like $50 to $100 on your shopping, doing nothing. There's literally no reason not to install Honey. It takes two clicks, 10 million people use it, 100,000 five-star reviews. Unless you hate money you should install Honey. Elsewhere, Midoriya flew through darkness and emerged into a crumbling building. The flaming fist that was meant for the shadow villain collided with a dilapidated wall. Midoriya managed to dodge the debris coming down from the ceiling. That was close. I almost got bared there. Suddenly a pile of rubbish started to move. The high-strung Izuku panicked thinking that something was wrong. Ah, uh, what is going on? Suddenly, Bakugo emerged from underneath the pile. Kakin, what are you doing under there? The ceiling caved in on me when my attack went off. Okay, looks like we are in the earthquake zone. Of course it is you idiot. Quit saying obvious stuff. Before Midoriya could respond to Bakugo's explosive rhetoric, the two were attacked by a group of villain. Look at this Izuku. We have guests. The two boys went to work. Midoriya lit his hands and feet on fire. The force of the Greenette's attacks knocked out villains left and right. Bakugo also finished off bad guys using his explosive combat style. Before long, the floor of the room was covered in passed out bad guys. I don't like being underestimated. I know what you mean. These villains look intimidating, but they barely have any control of their powers. If I had to guess, there are probably only two or three guys who are actually dangerous. I would say the portal villain. The hand guy. And the big one with the beck are the ones you were talking about. No joke, green locks. The two boys back and forth banter was interrupted when a familiar figure came crashing through the wall into the room the two boys were in. As the figure landed on the ground in an unconscious heap, 
Bakugo realized that the person laying in front of them was Kirishima. Before Midoriya or Bakugo could move toward the spiky-haired boy, a large villain entered the hole that Kirishima left in the wall. The villain tried to speak but Bakugo and Midoriya acted quickly. Both boys delivered powerful blows to the villain's face. Bakugo using his explosions and Midoriya using his flaming fist. With that the villain was knocked out. The two rivals then turned to check on their rock-skinned friend. Kirishima laid unconscious on the dirty floor of the wrecked building. From what the two hotheads could tell, their red-eyed friend had no serious injuries. Midoriya grabbed Kirishima's shoulders and shook the teen violently. Wake up Kirishima. This is no time to sleep. Tell us what happened to you. Kirishima did his best to answer but Midoriya's constant shaking made the redhead dizzy. Kirishima spoke through the violent jerking. I'll tell you Midoriya. Just stop shaking me. Midoriya got a shocked look on his face and released his grip on the firm skinned teen. Sorry about that. Kirishima caught his breath and answered his two classmates. I was right behind you two when you attacked the portal dude. I guess I got teleported to this location with you. But I found myself in a different part of the building surrounded by villains. I managed to fight off most of them. But that last one attacked me from behind. That was when I came flying into this room. Bakugo huffed in irritation. Then the teen spoke in his usual loud and angry manner. Well at least you aren't injured. Come on. We need to get back to the front gate and take out that shadow bastard. Should we try to find our classmates first? You know, strength in number and all that. Midoriya went over to the window closed his eyes, and started to sniff the air. If you want to waste time trying to find everyone then go ahead. I want to end this. That portal jerk is their way in and out. We take him out. That will save everyone. Midoriya opened his eyes and turned back to the conversation. While I don't agree with his tone, he has a point, Kirishima. The longer this attack goes on the more of our classmates will get hurt. Besides, most of them are in groups. And if all of the villains are at the same level as the one we all faced, then our classmates can handle them. Well, you two are really manly. You both really believe in our classmates. Well, count me into your plan. Just one thing, Midoriya. How do you know our classmates are in groups? Izuku replied matter-of-factly. I smelled them. Say what now? Green Bean here has a sense of smell that would put a dog to shame. Speaking of which, are any of our classmates still by the front gate? Yes they are. It is hard to tell from this distance. But they seem to be holding the portal villain at bay. Good. Listen, both of you. Kirishima. You and I will take out the portal villain, Midoriya. You head toward Urza Sensei and see if you can help against the hand guy and the bird jerk. Both Midoriya and Kirishima nodded in agreement. And with that, the three classmates ran toward the main gate. As the three drew close to the front gate Midoriya split off from his red-eyed compares and headed towards the major battle in the center of the dome. Midoriya approached the conflict quietly to get a read on the situation before jumping in. What the green teen saw shocked him to his core. The ground was littered with villains. All of the criminals had cuts and bruises all over their bodies. Midoriya figured this was from fighting Urza. He knew his teacher was a powerful wizard. He also knew that her main power was called Requip. This power allowed her to change out weapons and whole armors. The villains never stood a chance against Urza. Her power and fighting style was perfect for handling large groups of enemies. Of course the teen was more shocked by the fact that Urza was struggling against the large bird villain. The fierce redhead hacked and slashed at the beast but he just regenerated. Urza was also breathing very heavily and her body was shaking slightly. Midoriya figured the armored woman had used a lot of magical power. If she kept going like this, she was going to pass out. That would leave her vulnerable to the villains. Midoriya was pulled out of these thoughts when he heard a voice. The voice spoke very quietly. If the forceful teen's hearing was not as powerful as it was, then he would not have heard it. Midoriya over here. Midoriya looked around and saw both Wendy and Kaminari hiding behind a nearby rock. The fire-breathing teen crept over to his friends. How did you two get here? I was with Sui and Maita. After we dealt with a group of villains, I came back here to see if I could help. I sent Sui and Maita to find and help the others. Similar story here. Except I was with Jiru and Yuriorazu. We also had to deal with a large group of bad guys. The girls and I agreed that I should come here and they would find the others. So what now? Midoriya thought for a moment and then spoke. I think we should wait before we get involved. Is that a good idea? I mean look at Scarlet Sensei. No, Midoriya is right. Titania's fighting style is all about brute force. We might get in the way if we jumped in now. Urza Scarlet retreated several feet from the hand villain. Who announced that his name was Tamura Shigaraki. You are a cool customer. Titania, I would expect nothing less from the woman they call Ruby Blitzkrieg. But there's no way you can match Namu's strength with those injuries. After all, Namu was designed to be the anti-symbol of peace. These injuries will definitely make it harder to fight. But a true warrior never gives up. 
Besides, I have to protect my students. I have been charged with their safety. With those bold words Urza renewed her attack against Namu. Unfortunately, it did not go very well. The injuries to her elbows diminished the power of her slashes. Before, she was easily able to lop one of the creature's arms off. Now she could barely cut through the creature's thick black hide. Shigaraki laughed at the bladed hero. For such a show, I can at least send you out of this world like a warrior. The gray-haired villain turned to his monstrous sidekick, Namu, finish her off, and then kill the children. 